Welcome, welcome back. And we spoke about planning and scheduling, we defined them. Now we're going to talk about importance of scheduling. Why do contractors and owners alike need scheduling? Well, first of all, owners need to get an idea on project expected finish date. Many owners are not informed. I've seen owners who want a project done in four months that this project needs 22 months. So they need to be realistic. From the contractor's perspective, they want to ensure ability to meet the owner's requirements or the contract's requirement. When the owner says, I want this project to be completed in 12 months, for example, the contractor needs to do scheduling to ensure that he or she is uh, able or capable of doing the project and completing it in 12 months as the owner or the contract stipulates. Reason number two, uh, owners like to ensure contractors proper planning for timely finish. And in this case, it's not only, you know, a schedule that says it's going to, uh, the project is going to finish in 12 months or 15 months. It's going to be detailed for, with milestones for the owner to measure the performance of the contractor. For the con from the contractor's perspective, it's to have efficient work plan coordinates with subcontractors. Now, um, there is something that we do in the United States, and I think it's all over the world. Most general contractors, we call them sometimes prime contractors in, in, in projects, they do very little, if anything, with their own forces. So in this case, uh, who does the work, most of the work? The subcontractors. You can have 10, 15 subcontractors. And what's the main uh, uh, function of the general contractor is to coordinate. And without scheduling uh, and, and the detailed schedule, this coordination is impossible. Well, reason number three why we schedule projects, owners and contractors both lay, uh, you know, like to have cash flow prediction and cash flow diagram. In fact, this is very important. Um, I remember in 1998, I read an article on ENR magazine. ENR magazine, for those of you who don't know it, it's engineering news records. And it's one of the most important construction magazines in the world. It's published by McGraw-Hill. It made a study on the collapse of construction companies. And they found that the number one reason for the collapse of construction companies is the financial uh, mismanagement. They don't collapse because of technical issues. No, it's because of financial issues, because the contractor is squeezed between two things. On one side, the payment by the owner, which may not come at in the right amount or the right timing. So he needs to get cash in from the owner. On the other side, it's the cash out to vendors, suppliers, subcontractors, and workers. So he cannot make those payments unless he gets the cash in. So if he makes a mistake and he didn't get, get the cash in at the right time, he cannot do the cash out. And I want to show you here two curves this first curve in the cash flow, you see three curves, all right? The upper one represents the spending of the contractor if he goes with the early dates. Now, later on in this seminar, we're gonna see that every activity will have two sets of dates, early start, early finish, and late start, late finish. And usually, unless the activity is critical, usually there is a little bit of leeway in between. So if we assume that the contractor goes with the earliest, he would be spending the money as early as possible. You know, as you see the three curves here end in the same amount, it's, 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 it's a set amount of, of budget. However, the timing of spending differs. And in the bottom of, of that uh, uh, graph, you'll see that the late curve, 
and that's if we do things as late as possible. In reality, it's probably going to be in between. We're not going to do all activities as early as possible, and we're not going to do as late as possible somewhere in between. And then I want to show you another very important curve, and that curve shows the red curve, red continuous curve, is the spending of the contractor. We call it S curve. Why don't? Why do we call it S curve? Because it look, looks like a, a lazy S uh, letter S. It starts a little bit slow because in the beginning of the project there is a little bit going on, maybe only clearing the land and excavation. But later on, it picks up and maybe we have 25 activities going on at the same time. Towards the end of the project, we're, it's winding down, so not much spending. So it's a little bit like that. Now, that's the spending of the contractor, which could be paying for his laborers, his subcontractors, his materials, vendors, and so on. And like I said, it's a continuous variable. The other one, which is like... Um, a discrete variable or a ladder, it's the reimbursement from the owner. The owner doesn't pay the contractor every couple of days or every week. There is a cycle, usually in the construction, it's monthly. And usually by the end of the cycle, the contractor adds up all the amounts that he in, indeed performed, he or his subcontractors, and submits that that list to the owner, actual quantities multiplied by unit price, and that unit price is part of the uh, contract documents. It's called schedule of values. In some areas of the world, they call it bill of quantities. And every month, the owner reimburses the contractor However, there are two problems with the reimbursement of the owner. One problem is that it lags behind. The contractor spends over a month and then the owner takes time, about four weeks or six weeks, to verify that indeed, you know, those uh, quantities were indeed done and then do the math, review the unit prices and so on, and then issue a payment. So that lag is uh, problem number one for the contractor. Problem number two, in most contracts, the owner does not pay the, the owner does not pay the contractor the full amount requested. He or she deducts 10% and that's retainage. They call it also in some parts of the word retention, retainage or retention. It's kind of leverage that the owner wants to keep on the contractor to you know, make sure that the project is completed according to the terms of the contract. As we see here towards the end of uh, this, the contractor is in negative cash flow the entire amount of uh, the entire life cycle of the project until the last payment comes in. The last payment is probably the biggest payment. It's 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 not only it includes the last progress payment, but also includes the retainage of the contract. Um, I don't want to get into the details of legalities here, but I found that in some parts of the world, mainly the Gulf areas, Saudi Arabia and UAE and, and uh, Qatar, those uh, countries have slightly different rules that in the beginning, they give the contractor an advance payment, which is a big amount. Also, uh, the retainage or retention amount, which is 10%, half of it is kept with the owner until the period of warranty is over, which is usually 400 days. So that adds more. There is time value of the money. The contractor, even though I'm I'm spending a dollar today and the owner is reimbursing me that dollar. But if that dollar, there is a lag of one month or two months, there is time value of the money. I have to borrow that, um, that dollar from a bank or financial institution and pay interest on it. So I have to uh, figure that out in the cost estimate and add that uh, this, this curve that you see here in this slide, 
Mainly, there are two important things in it. One, the time value of the money, which is the cost of borrowing money. Even if the contractor uses his own cash flow, it's called lost opportunity, that if I invested that money somewhere else, I would have made that money. So it's, it's a cost. It's a cost to the, owner, to, 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 to the uh, contractor. The other one is the maximum debt, possible debt, that there will be a negative flow. Usually it maximizes in, in a negative value in the middle of the project when the project, uh, the debt, debt of the contractor gets maximum. And the question that the contractor has to answer, do I have enough credit line so I can cover that, yes or no, and that's, uh, that's the problem. All right, we'll go back to that why we schedule projects. We talked about reason number three, the cash flow diagram. Now we go to reason number four, use for project control and verification of progress payment requests. We just talk, uh, talked about progress payments and there is a cycle in the construction industry. Most likely it's a on a monthly uh, basis that the contractor submits progress pay requests to the owner and the owner has to verify all the numbers in it. Reason number five, use for uh, change orders, impact, and what if scenarios. For change orders, and again, I uh, mentioned what the term internationally in um, England and some other parts of the world, they call it variation orders, which is the same thing. So in the US or North America, we say COs, and that's change orders. Um, in Europe, they call it VOs or variation orders. It's any departure from the original uh, contract documents. So if, if I have um, in my building some sort of uh, marble tiles and after we signed the contract and everything and the construction started and I said, wait, wait a minute, um, that marble tile is, is way more than I expected or, or price went up. I'm going to change it to ceramic tiles. So uh, I issue a change order to the contractor. I said, I'm changing instead of marble tile, I'm going to order a ceramic tile from certain specifications. And usually change orders have an impact on cost, on time, or both of them. So in this case, when there is a change order, uh, the contractor has to assess the impact on the schedule and inform the owner. Um, if we're building a 12-story building and all of a sudden the owner says, wait a minute, I'm going to expand it to 14 stories and then let's assume the foundation can take that. Yes, I can do that, but it's going to cost you this much money and it's going to extend the project by two months. Um, change order management is, is, is a whole uh, area that we can talk about it later on, but what I want to mention very quickly here is that in many change orders, it's not considered change order until it's approved and signed by the owner. It's, it's like a what if, it's a quest for a quotation, it's a quest for, you know, uh, the owner says, what if I do this and so on? And then the contractor tells him, well, it's going to increase the cost by this much and it's going to extend the project by, uh, three weeks, four weeks, whatever, and then the owner can accept, reject, or renegotiate. Finally, uh, the reason for contractors why they schedule projects is to do materials procurement. Uh, materials, we can talk about all kinds of materials, structural material or, or finishing materials and so on. There are items that uh, contractors can buy of any uh, suppliers ready. And some, sometimes, in two cases in particular, this may, uh, th they may need uh, way in advance notice. One case, if there is a custom item that is not available in the market, and I always like to uh, make an example of uh, a one piece uh, marble bathtub, all right? We're going to order it from Italy and it's going to, they're going to design it according to our specifications and then they're going to ship it by uh, sea. Uh, it's going to take eight months to, to, to be delivered. We need to know when it's going to be 
installed way in advance so we order it and the other case if we need a standard item but a huge quantity of it we need uh, certain uh, paint or doors or locks or hardware or whatever it is but we have a huge building that we require about uh, 600 doors well we may not walk into Home Depot or a hardware store and say I need to buy 600 doors of, of this this needs to be uh, planned ahead who else needs the schedule well we said the owner and the contractor but who else the designer or the AE the design consultant in some companies uh, some countries they call it the design consultant and uh, we in the US we say the AE AE is uh, an acronym for architect engineer usually in the design they have to predict the schedule not in detailed way but in a way that will give kind of confidence to the owner that the project can finish at a certain date if I have a little shopping strip or shopping center that I want that shopping to be done by end of October so it will be ready for the holiday season I need to make sure I before I even picked a contractor I'm going to tell the or ask the design consultant the designer uh, can that project be completed by end of October 2018 and they have to tell me yes or no also the PMC or CM what's PMC CM you know by the way we in the United States we are very much in love with acronyms sometimes you know those acronyms are very uh, field specific so the same acronym we may say it in, in project management in medicine means something else in the military means, means something else so every say everything I say here it's in the construction management in general or construction project management context so PMC is project management consultant CM is construction management those companies are hired usually by the owner to oversee the construction process and make sure those also need the schedule lending institutions the lending institution the bank may not need a detailed schedule with 4,000 activities but they need certain milestones not only the completion date of the entire project but certain milestones to make sure you know they lend you millions of dollars they they are at risk so they want to make sure the project is pro, uh, progressing um, as uh, as planned also the government licensing for licensing and permitting legal consultants attorneys and other you know all all the project parties need to have a you know an idea about the project not at the same level of details of course uh, the the party that needs the detailed schedule uh, is the contractor and then the owner 